Let's get started with the first video in the Foundation series where we will show you a highly effective system to organize your files and prepare them for editing in Photoshop. The first program we'll use is Adobe Bridge. You can find Adobe Bridge in the Adobe folder on your computer. Then you're going to open up Adobe Bridge and it will default to the Essentials view. If it doesn't, just click on Essentials up at the top here. And then click on Favorites if that's not selected, and then Computer. And what this will do is show you all your drives that are on your computer. Then find your card reader. In my case it says EOS Digital because I have a Canon camera. Depending on the brand of camera you have, it could say something different here. Once you find your card reader, double click on it and go down through the submenus until you get to the actual files on your card. We're going to go to File, Get Photos from Camera. And what that's going to do is open up the Photo Downloader. And yours will probably look like this, the standard dialog box. What we really want to do is go to Advanced Dialog, and I'll show you in a minute why you want to do that. You're going to select your card, and then you're going to see the little icons show up. And this is why you want to use the Advanced Dialog, because it actually gives you the little images of what's on your card, and it gives you the option of selecting or deselecting images. If you go with the Standard Dialog, you have to import all the files that are on the card into one folder. So Advanced Dialog is much more efficient because you can import the files directly into the folders they belong into. Now, I think you should take a moment here and decide on how you want to organize your files on your hard drive. I recommend putting them right into the picture folder and then putting submenus in that picture folder. You could uh, put them in a folder by date. You could put them by subject matter. In this case, I could put it by a trip. This is the trip to Acadia National Park up in Maine. You could theoretically make a folder that says Acadia National Park 2010 and have that be a subfolder in my trip folder. Whatever works for you, do it. Because this is going to be the foundation for building the organization of your Photoshop folders. Do something where you'll be able to find your files quickly and easily that makes logical sense to you. That being said, let's pick some files. Uh, I'm going to uncheck all and I'm going to pick my three little beavers here and I'm going to put them in their own little folder. And I'm going to do that by going up here and click on the browse button. And then I'm going to click on the picture subfolder and I could make a new folder right here called Beavers, or I could come up here and where it says Create Subfolder, I could click here and go Custom Name and then type in Beavers. If I could type. If I didn't want just a subfolder of Beavers, I wanted the Beavers to be in a animal subfolder, I could go back up here now still have pictures chosen, make a subfolder, and call it Animals, and click OK. They're going to be saved in Pictures, Animals, Beavers. So this kind of gives you an example of how powerful this photo downloader is. It gives you many options on importing these files and the ability to change as you go. Now another thing that's handy is you can rename the files. As you can tell, the camera's not very inventive when it comes to naming files. It pretty much follows a strict protocol, one right after the other. So what we're going to do is, if you look at little beavers here, we don't really want them to stay MG3112 because it doesn't really give us any information later on. So we're going to make a custom name for them, and we're going to call them beavers. If you look here, you can put numbers here, and we'll change that back to 1. So we'll have beaver 1, beaver 2, and beaver 3. Right here, you can preserve current file name in XMP. What that does, it saves the original camera file name in an XMP file that's connected to the new named file that you're going to be saving on your computer. This could be handy in the future if you needed to know what the original camera file name was. I'll leave that up to you. If you feel that you want that extra security of knowing what the original camera file name was, go ahead and check this little box off right here. The next advanced option here is to open Bridge, which I checked so I can just see the files once I open them up. This one here is to convert to TNG, which is Adobe's digital negative format. I don't check this 
here because my files are already raw and I, I like working with the Canon RAW file. You can choose to check this off if you want to if you've got JPEGs. That way there you're making a file that's lossless and you won't have any issues when you actually work on the files in Photoshop. We'll get into that in more detail later. Right now I'm not going to check this. Delete original files could come in handy if you want to copy your files and then just get rid of them off the card so the card's empty when you go to put it back in your camera. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you check this box which saves copies. In other words, it's an instant backup for the files that you're importing. Choose an external hard drive or a hard drive separate from where you're putting your original files. That way if anything happens to that hard drive, you have a copy of those files. I cannot stress enough how important that is to have those files saved somewhere else in case something happens. Down here, apply metadata. Basic metadata, if you uh, make more templates, they would be listed right here. In my case, I just got the creator and my copyright of 2010. This is good enough for me. If you want something more fancy, you can do that if you want to. Now that we have all our options checked, we can click right here, get photos, and you can see, boom, copied them right over, opened up in the Adobe Bridge. Right here, we got our three little beavers. You can see they're in the subfolder animals. Well, the subfolders beavers, and here there are three little cute guys just hanging out. Now that we have these imported here, we can resize them, make them a little bigger. Also, click on these different tabs up here, film strip mode, or you know, metadata mode. All of these are very handy tools, and we'll go over some of these a little bit more in uh, future videos. Now we'll go back to essentials right now. We can import our files and organize them into relevant folders on our computer. In part two, I will show you how easy camera raw is to use and show you the power of the sliders. See ya!